Canada's automotive industry is the fourth largest industry in the Dominion. In this film, there will be graphically demonstrated the far-flung influence of motor car manufacture upon the livelihood of Canada's citizens. From the ground up, in the majority of instances, is aptly descriptive of the extent to which automobile makers contribute to the development of the primary industries of the nation. Steel, iron, copper, lead, asbestos, textile products, and other of the rich resources of the land of the maple leaf are drawn upon in great quantities by the automotive industry. In all these cases, the part played by such products will be traced from their very source up through the various processes of refining and manufacturing until they take their place in one form or another upon the motor car. The plants of the automobile manufacturers have an estimated annual capacity of 385,000 motor vehicles. Into its factories are pouring day after day trainloads of parts and raw materials from hundreds of sources throughout the country. In the motor plants alone, there is an estimated investment of $98 million. In the neighborhood of $100 million worth of materials are purchased annually from other Canadian manufacturers and sources. vivid impression of the extent to which the primary industries of the Dominion benefit by the large consumption of basic materials on the part of Canada's automobile manufacturers. These are the areas from which the primary industries providing iron, steel, nickel, copper, coal, lumber, textiles, lead, zinc, asbestos and other products draw their raw materials. A large proportion of the raw and basic materials used in the production of Dominion-made motor cars is of Canadian origin. This map graphically illustrates the number of Canadian centers involved in the production of such raw materials for the automotive industry. These plants are located in 70 or more cities and towns of the Dominion. There are over 600 direct sources of supply of automobile materials and parts situated throughout the length and breadth of the nation, a significant fact pointing to the importance of the automotive industry in the lifeblood of Canada. steel, without which the modern automobile would be non-existent. From the ore boat, the iron ore is conveyed to huge blast furnaces. Millions of dollars of iron and steel products are purchased each year for the manufacturing of motor cars in the Dominion. Into the roaring blast furnaces goes the ore, emerging as molten pig iron. This, combined with additional ingredients, is placed in the open hearth steel furnaces. And in turn, there results glowing liquid steel, which is cast into ingots. Following different rolling processes, the ingots are reduced into billets and bars in successive operations. Years ago, when Canada was concentrating upon the development of her transportation systems, blast furnaces were roaring day and night to supply rail. The day came when the Dominion was spanned from Atlantic to Pacific and the demand for rail subsided. But industry was growing by leaps and bounds and the mills turned their attention to the supply of commercial steel of which the automobile industry uses large amounts. The billets which are semi-finished steel, are ready to be shipped. In the foundry, the molten iron is transferred in ladles from the cupolas to the various molds, which shape diverse castings. 
To the forging plants, the steel bars are delivered for the different mechanical parts, which must of necessity possess strength to perform their strenuous functions. Here is a crankshaft being taken from the heating oven for final forging. The forging of a crown gear in the first operation, after which it is electrically welded. These two are representative forgings in motor car manufacture. The machine shop presents a scene of great activity. Here may be seen a cylinder block in the process of being machined. The machining of all manner of parts proceeds apace where absolute precision is demanded. Among other things, crown gears, crankshafts, axles, shock absorbers, piston rings, pistons, transmission gears, pinions, and beveled pinions are being developed. These various automobile parts manufacturers represent a large industry in themselves. such plants located in the various towns and cities throughout the Dominion. Cushion springs are fashioned out of wire, drawn in Canadian mills, and produced from Canadian steel. Intricate automatic machines form the coils with lightning speed. This machine has a capacity of 100 coils per minute. The springs are then delivered to the assembly line and assembled into completed back and seat springs. on the chassis assembly line. As the manufacture of the cars is shown in progressive stages, we shall return to this assembly line as each component part is completed and ready to be attached in its appointed place. Asbestos, mined in the province of Quebec, where 90% of the world supply exists is the raw material employed in the production of brake band lining. Cotton yarn is treated with asbestos and woven with wire into the brake band lining. And thus the finished article. There are numerous operations to the manufacture of these brakes and different operations are developed in different plants. The completed brakes are then placed in position on the chassis on the assembly line.
rear end and springs are assembled on the frame. The manufacture of springs for motor cars in Canada is a very important industry in itself, being entirely dependent on the automotive industry. The chassis are beginning to assume a recognizable form at this stage. Another intermediary industry which derives much business from the motor car manufacturers is that which concentrates upon electrical units. Here generators and starting motors are being made, armatures being wound, all representing numerous primary industries. These units, unassuming in appearance, represent the primary industries of copper, brass, iron and so on. generators and starting motors are then assembled and the combination of various mechanical parts and castings having been accomplished, the starting motor is ready for shipment to the automobile factory. In the automobile plant, work progresses on the assembly of the car engine. of wire from copper rods is yet another distinct Canadian industry. Becoming finer and finer as it undergoes the drawing operation the wire is enclosed in cotton and rubber insulation. The insulated ignition cable is wound in coils. And eventually, the distributor heads are assembled. The workers shown here assemble 20,000 spark plugs daily. Spark plugs, distributor heads, and other parts of the motor are attached by workmen on the chassis assembly line, and another phase of the car's progress is completed. The manufacture of steering gear is an additional example of the score of associated industries involved in the making of motor cars. Wheel and rod having been attached, the completed steering gear is also brought to the assembly line. To the careful driver, a bumper is a valuable feature. It is also a valuable feature in Canadian industrial life, being an important industry of its own. may be seen being polished, plated, and finally being assembled. The already impressive number of intermediary industries concerned in automobile manufacturing is augmented once more with this view of the making of wheels. Here is the first stage of the steel rim. Then 
Then the rim is placed over the shell and the steel wire spokes are threaded through the rim, ready for riveting. There are 40 spokes required for each wheel and two spokes are riveted in each operation. And so the finished wheel. The value of raw rubber imported annually amounts to some $22 million. Seven huge Canadian plants, complete with the most modern equipment, manufacture the raw rubber into tires. Different layers are gradually applied. Over a special form, the casing is ready to be shaped and formed. The tires are then placed in curing ovens. Out of the mold comes one sturdy tire, and in goes another for its finishing touches. And another Canadian industry has contributed its share to the rapidly forming motor car as the tires are attached to the wheels, which are then placed on the chassis assembly line. Headlamp factory, which is completely dependent on the motor car industry, has a capacity of 4,000 complete headlamps daily. There are a multiplicity of parts in one of these lamps, more parts to this perhaps than most other parts of an automobile. The assembly of the lamps and grinding of lamp bodies having been completed, the lamps are taken to the assembly line. From Canada's rich mines, there comes copper, a great industry in itself. The mining of this metal is carried on under most efficient, thoroughly up-to-date conditions. From the mine, great quantities of ore are continually being transferred to the large-scale smelters, from which emerges material designed to play an influential part in the beauty and efficiency of Canada's motor cars. As the result of the cooling process, the molten metal becomes copper ingot. And with the use of precise machinery, the ingots are rolled through many processes into various shapes and forms. In the same plant, the copper is alloyed with zinc to produce brass. From a thick ingot, the copper has been transformed into strips, into tubes, and divers additional forms according to the variety of functions copper is involved in in the automobile factory.
rubber is being made into tubing. And here into radiator cores. Crimping machines shape the material into the desired radiator forms and then the crimps are assembled. Having been smoothed and clamped securely, the soldering process completes the radiator core. The radiator shells are plated, after which the core is inserted and the completed radiator is transferred to the chassis assembly line. An average of 20 million feet of lumber each year is used by the automotive industry of the Dominion. In Canada's fair Pacific Coast province, British Columbia, the great lumber industry is called upon to contribute to the making of automobiles. These leafy spires are held by expert woodsmen, transferred in log trains to the mill, where they are prepared to assume the duty of boxes for the export of cars and Canada is the second largest exporter of motor cars in the world. It is in northern Ontario that the hardwood is taken for the building of body frame. This, another distinct industry, furnishes an extensive amount of its product to the automobile plants. It undergoes numerous machining processes in preparation for the assembly of the body frame. Cut and planed to the nth part of an inch, the body frame eventually takes shape on the body assembly line. Sections are brought together and finally the complete body frame is assembled. The stamping plant, where sheet steel is fabricated in mammoth presses to provide body parts, radiator shells, gas tanks, hoods, fenders, and miscellaneous sheet metal parts. fender blanks to required shape before plating in the great presses. And then drawing or forming 
booming fenders under a pressure of 1,050 tons. completed part. Metal parts are assembled to the wooden body frames which when completed are known as composite bodies. body is composed entirely of metal and is assembled and welded on special fixtures. body assembly line with all steel bodies. The mixing of paints and lacquers brings us to an additional important Canadian industry. The development of modern lacquers for automobile finish has opened up another important industry. Ingredients are mixed in large laboratories equipped with facilities providing the most exact observance of formula. In this department, the body is received in what is known as the white and receives spray primer coats as well as other operations. This modern method of applying paint to car bodies has been one of the greatest advances in modern motor car industry. The rapid drying qualities of present day lacquer enables the manufacturer to turn out the completed car within a few hours of the painting operation. It is a far cry from motor car factories to the sheep farm, but the relation is more vital than one is wont at first to consider. From the sheep to the mills, where the yarn is spun on bobbins, woven on looms into fabric. responsible for the luxurious appearance of the interior of Canadian automobiles. The plush is folded, ready for delivery to the upholstery shops. Another distinct industry supplies the waterproof fabric utilized for the car tops. On this line is made the application of the top decking. And once the material has been placed in position, waterproof cement is applied along the edges, after which strip moldings are applied. foundation and body trim materials are prepared from the cardboard foundations and yard goods into finished panels. The panels are constructed from wood pulp 
which is still another important Canadian industry contributing to car manufacture. Workers are engaged on the upholstering of seats. Raw materials which go into this and other upholstering operations embrace mohair, wool, cotton, and so forth. From 20 to 30 Canadian mills are engaged in supplying textile products to automobile companies. The preparation of non-shatterable glass for the safety of all car owners involves the placing of fine celluloid between two sheets of glass. They are then placed in retorts to prevent any air leaking between the glass partitions. The grinding operation. In this special instance, a rear window is being formed. On the assembly line, the windshields and windows are being placed in position. While in the interior, the instrument panel is installed. And what is generally termed the hardware is also assembled. Thus, the final touches are made on the body assembly line. And the completed body is lowered down to meet a completed chassis. into position, and as the result of precise workmanship, another motor car is almost ready for the customer. Finally, there is in Canada's farthest western province, British Columbia, the lead industry, which also plays a vital part in the work of building dependable cars. Here may be seen the refining or electrolytic process, at which stage all impurities are removed. And from the boiling lead, following a cooling process, there comes lead paint. In the battery plant, parts are cast for the storage batteries. The plates are trimmed, the cells are packed into the battery cases, and other finishing operations are concluded. ready for delivery to dealers throughout the Dominion and for export throughout the world.
Such is the impressive story of Canada's great automotive industry, an industry which gives employment directly to 16,000 workers who receive an average of $27 million each year, an industry in which 150,000 Canadians are estimated to be directly interested either as employees, salesmen, dealers, shareholders, art suppliers, or dependents, an industry which surpasses all other products in its requirements of diversified material and equipment, an industry in the greatest sense of the term, Canadian, building like the busy beaver towards a greater, more prosperous 